and what kind of things are going to be in them. So that one we really packed up. So <laughs> um, it's pretty much got one of everything in it. So it's got the cotton candy, a crispy cake, that hot chocolate frosting, a couple of cookies, the brownie, the marshmallows, the... Uh, the edible cookie dough and those cookie shots. And of course that hand doodle card in there as well. Welcome to Mouthful. I'm Lori Lynn Barker. Mouthful is a podcast about food, culture, and the makers in this world. On this episode of Mouthful, I'm talking with Jimmy LaPrell, owner of Deserted.co. Mouthful is sponsored by CCFDocumentation.com. Let CCF develop your e-learning or instructional video training. From training assessment to course creation and LMS administration, CCF is your one-stop training resource. Check them out at CCFDocumentation.com. So you want to have a cotton candy dance party? Want to say thank you? I'm sorry. Happy Valentine's Day. Let Jimmy from Deserted.co send a sweet gift to say all of these things and more. Listen to this episode and find out about all the things he offers in his mail order sweet dessert boxes. We sell dessert boxes as gifts. So um, birthday gifts, anniversary gifts, breakup gifts, whatever you need to send a gift for. Uh, we pile a whole bunch of awesome desserts into a box. We hand it a little card and we send it off for you. Now, do you have specific boxes for specific occasions? You know, we do. And when we first started less than a year ago, we actually had specific boxes. We had the breakup box. We had the birthday <laughs> box, um, anniversary box, all kinds of different boxes. But what we found is that people that are buying these boxes want certain types of, of desserts in the boxes. So we kind of revamped the way we sell the boxes. And now we have different named boxes, um, like Go Fluff Yourself, for example, <laughs> is one of the boxes with a, a little bit more cotton candy. So we've set up the the boxes to have a certain type of desserts and a certain price point. And then when you're checking out, you get to choose which theme it is. So you can turn any box into a birthday box or into a breakup box or into an anniversary box or whatever it is. Tell me what kind of items are available to put in the boxes. Yeah, so we have tons of different desserts that uh, that we have in in all of our boxes. So we have flavored cotton candy so tons of different flavors even a new birthday cake flavor we have crispy cakes so think of like your dream rice crispy treat mm -hmm. from your childhood and then times that by like 12 and then yeah flavor i've it. had one they're amazing <laughs> yeah and then put a big oreo cookie on top or something else so we have flavored um crispy cakes we have hot chocolate icing that you literally just eat with a spoon out of the jar oh really can you do you heat it up no, no, you don't. You just um, eat it out of the jar. Or put it on a cookie, put it on your pancakes, <laughs> or you just eat it straight Pretzels. out of the jar. Yep. Uh, we have cookies. We have several different types of cookies, chocolate chip cookies, sugar cookies. We have seasonal cookies, too, for our, some of our seasonal boxes. Um, awesome brownies. So yes, you guys have are. brownies in there. Um, we have gourmet marshmallows of different flavors. We have cookies and cream gourmet marshmallows, like big, like two-inch cube nice. marshmallows in there. Which means they're homemade. Yeah. Uh, or small batch. Yeah, exactly, exactly right. Um, edible cookie dough. So it's you don't have to cook it or anything. You just open the little tub and eat that no straight out. It. Yep, no Basically eggs. Basically, is that what? Uh, that's how they're getting away with the edible cookie dough is they don't put eggs in. It. Exactly, and so that's uh, that's really really good. And then we also have cookie shots. And tell me what those. are. So imagine <laughs> like a big cookie, and then you kind of fold it up into a shot glass, and then you put. Um, a bunch of chocolate and stuff on the inside, and you let it harden so that you could fill it up with whatever you want. Ice cream? Ice cream, coffee. Uh, more frosting? <laughs> more frosting, whatever you want. And you Cotton can... candy? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so you can drink or eat whatever you want out of those cookie well, shots. I bet wine would be kind of interesting. Yeah. The right wine or port. Yeah, that would be super good. And then after you're done drinking out of that cup, you just eat it. So maybe <laughs> it's a awesome. port or, or even a whiskey would be nice. Yeah, absolutely. Or, oh, Guinness. Mm. Oh, now I need one of those. Yeah, those are so good. <laughs> and then and then you eat the cookie afterwards. It's kind of flavored from what you put in it. Mm -hmm. And what are some other things that you have? So um, most of the desserts um, are... Oh, let me start that sentence over. Mm -hmm. That's most of the desserts that we have in the, in the dessert boxes. We always add different seasonal flavors, whether it's cotton candy or crispy cakes or the cookies and brownies. So we have different seasonal flavors. And every box that we have has kind of a different array 
uh, of those desserts. So whether you just want to um, buy a birthday gift for somebody or if you want to order a huge box for the entire office to share, um, all the boxes have different uh, different amounts of desserts in them. But every single box does come with something that we just came out with, hand-doodled cards. Nice. So we... And your wife makes those, correct? Yeah, she does. They're really cool. So we actually uh, we have a, a really cool cutting machine, and uh, we cut our custom cards in there, and they're all themed, whether it's like a birthday, an anniversary, breakup, whatever it is. And uh, we'll cut those, and then we'll actually hand-doodle all the cards. So nice. whatever note that you want us to write in there, we're going to... We're going to doodle it in there for you. Tell me about the resurrection by chocolate. Yeah, we needed a box that was only chocolate. Y- you right? think? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, we just filled it up with everything that we had that was chocolate. Mm-hmm. Um, and we were kind of playing off the death by chocolate and mm-hmm. seemed fitting resurrection by chocolate. Resurrection so by good. chocolate. And can people handpick the chocolate that goes in there or is that already picked? Yeah, so we do have all of our boxes kind of set up, but there's also a button on there for custom boxes, you know. Okay. So if you want something specific, uh, just let us know and we'll put it all together for you. So yeah, custom boxes are definitely within our wheelhouse. Tell me about your good enough box. That's new since I last talked to you. Yeah, we wanted to have a couple of price points for the boxes. So whether you want to have a massive box for you know the entire office or just like a little one. Um, so that's what good enough box is for. So it's kind of our entry level box. Nice. Mm-hmm. And can people do a subscription with this? Not yet, Not but yet. it has crossed our mind a few times. I think you to should. Do... <laughs> yeah. I think you should yeah. kind of be like a loot box. Yeah. Where people, it's like a dessert box and they just open up. It's like, ooh, what are we going to get today? Yeah. Yeah. We, we've been tossing that idea around and, and I like it. Well, before we go any further, tell people how they can get a hold of you. Yeah. So our website is deserted.co. So just like desserts, deserted.co. Mm-hmm. And it's awesome. It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Where do you get some of your items from? Yeah, so we source all of our desserts from companies all over the place, several of them here in Denver. Um, For example, the cookies and the brownies, and we actually even have some coffee that we throw in our seasonal boxes. Mm -hmm. Those are all from local Denver companies. And, um, And then we work with some other small companies. One of the things when we started this company that we really wanted to drive home was work with small companies that make really interesting, awesome desserts and mainly ones that you can't find in stores. So you won't be able to just go to the grocery store and buy any of this stuff. Right. It's all really cool, small companies that uh, make really unique desserts. Well, I will share with you, I tried to find the cookie cups, could not find them. All I found were uh, the kits to make them or the oh, molds okay. that you could make them. Yeah. So you can't find, you just can't go to the store and get the cookie cups. I tried. Yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. And I ran across that company a while back when we were building the company and uh, it was an instant, oh, I have to have that. Mm-hmm, right. <laughs> you know, Cause I don't think I could ever make one of those myself. And yeah. so they, they figured it out. Yeah. I was looking at it. I'm like, do you think I could make it? And I'm like, ah, oh, I'm going to just have to get them from Jimmy. <laughs> yeah, totally. Can I just have a box of those cups, please? I could do that. <laughs> what are some other items that you have in your inventory that are from Colorado or from local? Yeah, so all of our cookies. So several different flavors of cookies. You got a couple over there. Um, the chocolate chip cookies, the uh, the sugar cookies. Um, we also have the seasonal cookies. So in our Christmas boxes that we just finished up, we had this triple ginger cookie and then uh, another kind of dark chocolate peppermint cookie. Oh, and that those amazing. Yeah, they're so good. Oh, and, you brought me one. Yeah. Oh, you're awesome. They're super good. <laughs> so yeah, those come from a local company called Share Good Foods, mm-hmm. and uh, they have um, a really cool give back element as well from their company. And then we work also work with Magnus Coffee, who mm-hmm. uh, who provides the coffee in our boxes as well. Well. Tell me about Share Good Foods. I've kind of done some research on it, so mm-hmm. tell me what they are. Yeah, so they're uh, they're a local company here in Denver, and you'll find some some of their cookies. They sell in a, a few different coffee shops. The uh, the guys that own that company own a couple coffee shops, so you might find some of their cookies in there. Um, but uh, yeah, they're a really cool company that uh, that they just make awesome desserts, but they also make like sandwiches and salads and stuff. And mm-hmm. um, and yeah, they have. A focus. Their company focus is to kind of bring light to social enterprises or other companies that um, are just trying to do good in the community. And so they uh, they'll work with the different companies, like what we're trying to do at Deserted or any other companies, and they uh, they feature them every you know a different company every month that's doing something good for the community. Well, it's either your favorite holiday or the least favorite holiday that's coming up, and that's Valentine's Day. And I personally like Valentine's Day. Yeah. Well, I'm also married. 
Mm-hmm. But when I was single, it was like, you know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but a lot of things, a lot of people now are having, it's not called Valentine's Day, but they get together with their friends. It's like friends. It's like friends giving, but friends. Yeah. yeah friends. But it's for Valentine's yeah. where all the girls get together. It's from Parks and Recreation. So you're doing uh, Valentine boxes. Yeah, we are. We just released a Valentine's Day box um, or a singles box or whatever you want it mm-hmm. to be. But we did uh, we did just put that up on our website. So those will all be delivered that week of Valentine's Day. And what kind of things are going to be in them? So that one we really packed up. So um, <laughs> it's pretty much got one of everything in it. So it's got the cotton candy, a crispy cake, that hot chocolate frosting, a couple of cookies, the brownie, the marshmallows, the... Uh, the edible cookie dough and those cookie shots. And of course that hand doodle card in there as well. And are you going to put any of those little card conversation hearts in there? Um, you know what? We were kind of thinking about it. I'm yeah. Sure. There's somebody around that probably makes them. Yeah. Every box we have has this kind of, we throw in um, some, some candy confetti as we call it to kind of top it off. Oh, okay. But yeah. Okay. So like the, there's chupa chups in there and some lollipops and some other little things in there to top it all off. And you got to tell me what a chupa chup is because you've told me last time and I still don't know what it is. <laughs> yeah, they're these awesome lollipops that come in different flavors. And where are they from? Are they like... You know, I think they've been around for like 50 years. Oh, or really? Something. Yeah, they're uh, they're just kind of all over the place, but they're just really special delicious lollipops. Huh, I've yeah. never heard of them. I'm going to have to look them up again. If people want to order before Valentine's Day, what's their drop dead date? Of the ordering from you. Yeah, so we do ship our boxes priority mail. So it's it's really just three days in advance. We can get a box anywhere within about three days. So Valentine's Day this year lands on a Friday. Mm-hmm. So we just need to ship it out by Tuesday if it's going to somewhere like New York. Um, or if it's if it's here in Denver just the day before, really. And you ship everywhere. We ship all over the United States, yeah. You just happen to be in Denver and you just happen to focus on some Denver items. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're a local Denver company and so we, uh, we have a a nice fan base here in Denver. Um, and we're really involved in our local community here as well. So, um, yeah, Denver's obviously our home. And so we can usually just turn that around next day. And you're originally from Austin? No, I'm from Albuquerque. Albuquerque. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so how did you make the journey from Albuquerque to Denver and deserted.co? Yeah. So the, my, I grew up in Albuquerque the journey took my wife and I to LA and we moved to LA for a while and kind of started our careers there, had, had fun there for about five years. And then we wanted to come to a place where we could settle kind of long-term, have mm-hmm. some kids. And so now we have two kids here and, uh, and we wanted to settle. That was kind of close to Albuquerque, but still kind of our own place. Right. So that's how we got. To and Denver. I think a lot of people forget that Denver is so close to New Mexico because yeah. I love New Mexico. I just, I just adore that state. And a lot of people have so many misconceptions about it. Um, so, and it, and I, you tell people, it's like, yeah, I'm going to run down to New Mexico this week. And they're like, why? Yeah. I'm, it's like, I'm not going out of country. New Mexico is not its own country. It is literally <laughs> four hours away from here. <laughs> yeah. It's super close. And it's a cool place. It's a very cool place. Great food. Mm-hmm. Great food. Great art. Yeah. You know, you could do yourself a favor, go down to New Mexico and just sightsee or just kind of go the back roads and see the little towns that mm-hmm. have the artist communities that you run into just you get lost and next thing you know you're in an artist community yeah you know i kind of grew up between albuquerque and santa fe mm-hmm. and santa fe is that type of place the best new mexican food ever and really cool art scene the shed yeah that's my favorite oh that's, yeah yeah that's my favorite out there maria's has got is up there too yeah that's where we always went maria's maria's yeah the the other cool thing about New Mexico is they do a lot of filming down there now. Yeah. Just tons. If you go to uh, Santa Fe now and you're on the outside of town, they have just got tons and tons of film studios. There. Yeah. You know, an interesting tip there is my dad, he was a pilot for his career and then he turned 65. So um, he had to retire mm-hmm. as a pilot. And I swear, he was born in the wrong time. He wanted to be born in the Wild West, you know, <laughs> and be a cowboy and settle settle the West. And so now he's an extra in movies. Like awesome. every day he's an extra and he's kind of moving his way up, but he's he's just like an old sheriff or uh, <laughs> or some kind of cowboy just in the bar fight or something. So he's he's living it up right now oh, as yeah, an extra. Oh, yeah, because they film so many. They film yeah. True Grit there. They film No Country for Old Men, which mm-hmm. is not a country, not a Western 
but they filmed that one on Netflix, Godless. Yeah. You know, they're just filming just right and left. They actually filmed Power Rangers down there, really? which a lot of people don't know, which I yeah. think is absolutely hilarious. And Tom Hanks just got finished filming down there. Yeah, and both of my parents were in that Tom Hanks film. Oh, <laughs> really? Yeah. That's awesome. As extras, yeah. Did you go down? I didn't. Did you fan out? No, I, I didn't. Out. I should have gone down there. Because I'm pretty sure Tom Hanks smells like butterscotch. And I've got to... <laughs> I'll ask him. Okay. <laughs> oh, not Tom Hanks. I'll ask my parents. <laughs> well, I have to ask. I'll tweet Tom Hanks. Do you yeah. smell like butterscotch? I'm pretty <laughs> sure you do. Well, that's awesome. That's amazing. Yeah. So how did you start the business? What was the reasoning behind that? Yeah. So when I got my career started out in LA and then moved out to Denver, uh, I was uh, I was in sales and business development and I was just selling really cool kind of adventure travel products actually. And it came time at the end of the year to send out thank you client boxes or, or some kind of gift for them. And I just really couldn't find anything that was cool enough to kind of match the brand I was selling. We were selling really fun adventures all around the world, like go to New Zealand or go hike the base camp of Everest or whatever it was. It was just cool stuff. And all the gifts I was finding were just kind of boring. They just weren't cool enough for the brand, you know? Um, some stuff was pretty cool, but then the message and the cards that were in there were kind of just like printed, you know, if you just get a little printed card and it just kind of uh, sticks to the cellophane gift basket right. or something. Um, so, yeah, just nothing uh, really stood out to me that was going to be cool enough for the brands that I was selling. And so I just had the idea to start my own. And you and your wife came down, came up with the idea of deserted.co and off yeah. we went. Yep. Yep. So we put it together and uh, we sourced all the different desserts and we just try to make it really special on, um, on every level. So ev from the time that it hits your front step, it's a really cool branded black box with a mm -hmm. logo on it and stuff. So we wanted the experience to be kind of premium from the moment you see the box on your doorstep all the way through when you finish the desserts and you see your hand doodle card and everything else in there. Well, it's all about the packaging now. Yeah. And there's a name for it, but I can't remember it. But so many people are putting so much effort into their packaging. Look like when you just buy a pair of headphones. Yeah. I just bought a set of headphones or I received a set of headphones a couple months ago. And the box is just all laid out and there's doodling and you got to open this and you got to open this. I'm like, I just want my headphones. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Ooh, the box is pretty. Now what? You know? Yeah. Exactly. And I think Apple might have started that. Yeah. Yeah. They you have a really remember? Nice when you first started getting your iPods and your first mm -hmm. iPhones and stuff, it was always very pretty and you'd open it up and things started folding out. Yeah. Yeah. So we wanted a similar unboxing experience that was just premium kind of all the way through. Tell me your website one more time. It is deserted.co. So I like the word desserts, but deserted. So deserted with an extra S. Right. See, you should have, you should have hooked up with Tom Hanks because of the whole castaway thing when he was on the desert. Oh, island. Yeah. Yeah. Did you not tell your parents that? I, I like, might have no, an in now with him. So we'll see. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> not only do you provide delicious desserts to people via mail, which is awesome. So you could order them for yourself, couldn't you? Yeah, you know, a lot of people do. Yeah, I, I, and we don't tell anybody. You know, we see the order going out. We won't <laughs> you give tell. yourself an old, your own card, yeah. which is fine. You're supposed to do that. You're yeah. supposed to pamper yourself. Along with the deserted boxes, you also have a social impact. What's your social impact? Yeah. So when we were building the company, we really wanted to have kind of a tangible give back element. Um, you know, we didn't want to necessarily say like, hey, a, a certain percent of profits goes to, um, you know, this nonprofit that you may have never heard of or whatever it is. We really wanted to have a tangible impact. So we partnered with Food for Thought Denver who's a nonprofit here in Denver who uh, they feed kids over the weekend. So Title I schools or kids that are on free or reduced lunch, they might not have access to reliable food over the weekend. So between hot lunches on Fridays and then hot lunch on Mondays, they might not have um, reliable food then. So what this nonprofit does, um, and it's such a, it's, it's more of a movement really, is every Friday they meet under a bridge near the Metropolitan University downtown and they pack up all these food sacks and then they load them up into trucks and they deliver them to all these schools, over 40 schools now um, around the Denver area. And they, every single kid in those schools gets a power sack, as they call it, food. Right. And uh, it's, such a, it's such an awesome movement um, because, you know, when... When you're uh, a family that a uh, four that maybe doesn't make enough money, sometimes something falls off in the equation, right? You got to buy jackets and shoes and whatever else. And more often than not, sadly, food kind of falls off that equation. And so Food for Thought comes in and they, uh, they give every kid one of these power sacks of food. And it's just a really cool movement. Um, 
And so what we do is every dessert box we sell, we directly fund one of those food sacks for these kids. Nice. And I've actually been downtown and I've seen them packing their yeah. sacks. Yeah. Yeah, it's really cool. And the cool thing about this nonprofit is there is no overhead. So they don't pay for marketing. They don't pay for a space. Everything they do is completely volunteered or free. Um, and so every single cent that they get goes to buying the food itself. And every single cent of, of our donation per box goes to buying the food. So it's really, really cool. So it's a, it's a direct impact. Every box is one power sack for, for a kid for the weekend. Yeah, and that's a problem that they, a lot of people have been addressing, that these children are getting their food for the week. They're getting their breakfast and their lunch. And, you know, like, and even at Boys and Girls Club, they're getting their, their evening meal. But then the weekend comes. And they're like, okay, now. And they, they said what, how they noticed this problem is that the kids were, like, cutting their granola bar in half and taking the rest home so mm -hmm. they had something to eat over the weekend. So wow. I'm really glad that people saw this problem and are starting to address it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and the the two guys that started this nonprofit, I mean, they're they're visionaries and they uh they keep growing it as well. So when they first started, it was only a couple schools 7 years ago, and now it's over 40 schools wow. that they that they deliver every single Friday. They've never missed one Friday since they started. And their website is foodforthoughtdenver.org. It is. Yeah, so check them out. It's linked on our website too. Really cool place. Along with the custom-made boxes that you do, you're also expanding into corporate gifts. Yeah, and that's, you know, the original idea I had was I couldn't really find corporate gifts. Um, so although you could just buy a one-off box for a client or whatever, we wanted to kind of be in that space a little bit deeper. So we have corporate boxes now. So um, those are all customizable. So depending on the budget that a company might have for their gifts or how many gifts, we create custom boxes. And then... We'll fill them up with whatever desserts that the company wants or if there's just a certain budget to hit. But the coolest part is we custom cut those hand doodle cards. So we're actually going to use a machine to cut the company logo into the card itself. Mm -hmm. So super personalized for the company. Um, and then obviously just hand doodle those notes in there as well. And uh, one of the other things that we're doing is custom printing boxes as well. So, um, you know, like we were talking about, the unboxing experience is super important. So for a company, um, if they're going to be sending out gifts all year long, for example, or have a big batch for, for the end of the year or Christmas, we'll actually custom print boxes with your logo on it as well. Are any of the confectionery items going to have the logos on them? Yeah, we are uh, exploring that too. Exploring that? Yeah, yeah. I think a lot of people like that. Yeah. And with today's technology, it's very simple to do. Yeah. Not in everything. Because I know for a fact, like if you want a bar of chocolate with the logo, that's mm -hmm. a little, it's one step. But a lot of places that I know, there's a place down in Santa Fe that will make your truffles with the Ooh. with the logo on it, and they will. Uh, I've watched them do it, and it's amazing. It's just a little printer, and then they print out everything, yeah. and then they just put it on top yeah. of the truffles. So with today's technology, it's really yeah. simple to do. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so we're trying to make those corporate boxes really special, um, you know, and have the company logo up front. On and it's just not parts. for, it's just not for Christmas. Cause I think a lot of people just automatically go, Oh, we'll do this for Christmas. It could be for other times of the year. Yeah, absolutely. So if you're bringing new clients on, you want to send them a welcome box, for example, or if you're having some kind of one-off event and you want to have a little gift there for everybody at the, at the event. Yeah. We're exploring all those different things. And where do people get a hold of you? So you can find us at deserted.co. And you're on Instagram. I follow you on Instagram. Yeah, deserted.co on Instagram, deserted.co on Facebook. And we're thinking about TikTok. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what your age is, but I saw this great meme that said, uh, I tried to get on TikTok and it's an autocorrect said, no, you're over 40 and powered down my phone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Whew. I know. Harsh, huh? Yeah. <laughs> What's the appeal of TikTok? I'm not, I, I, I've looked at it. I've watched it. I don't know what the appeal is. Yeah, so they're just really short, fun videos. The cool thing I think about TikTok is there's no real standard yet. So you can kind of do what you want, but it is all based on videos mm -hmm. um, and just con just creating really cool, original content. Kind of like Vines. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. What happened to Vines? I don't know. 
I don't know Wasn't that the same concept? Yeah, I think it was similar, but I think TikTok is longer videos. Oh, okay. Um, and then they also do like voiceovers and stuff. So you can take the audio from someone else's video and uh, kind of lip sync your own video to it. So it's there's some really funny stuff. Oh, okay. There. Yeah, you can get lost in that for a long time, but it's just a cool platform for uh, for videos. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I, I've looked at it and... Personally, now I'm going to show my age. I sound like get off my lawn uh, type of person. There's so much out there. It's kind of like TV right now. There's so much out there. You've got to really just go, you know what? I can't do TikTok. I can't do Instagram, LinkedIn, and all of that. It's Even too though much you're stuff. supposed to yeah. in, our, in our, you know, when we're trying to market ourselves, you're supposed to. But after a while, you're like, I, 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 that's all you do is you do social media. But then you could hire somebody, too. Yeah, it just gets overwhelming to try to keep up with all that stuff. But, yeah, so, yeah, I guess that's why people have social media managers, right? To, right. To, to run about, all that stuff. <laughs> don't think I haven't been thinking about yeah. getting one. Just oh, me because, too. Because, you know, then I don't have to worry about it. And I still like the interaction, though, on social media. Yeah. That's what I really enjoy. Yeah, about. it definitely is a lot of work, and especially creating the content too. Whether you're I taking know. product photos or fun videos, it's mm -hmm. a lot of background on that. I know, and it's so common to see people now going, "Hold on, just a moment. I have to, you know, I have to take this video so I can get on whatever platform you're on." Yeah, yeah, exactly right. I kind of gave up Twitter. Did you? I did. What, and I why'd have you do a, that? Um, it was just getting too political and name calling, and it wasn't really the the platform I was looking for, you know? Yeah. And I know a lot of people who have given up Twitter for that reason too. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, I'm a, you know, like with you, I don't know if you're on Twitter. I'm a dessert box. I don't care about fill in the blank political statement yeah. today, you know, but yeah. you know, maybe you could just make an angry politician box, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you know what? We're actually not on Twitter. Oh, see? So we're focusing on Facebook, Instagram and TikTok. TikTok. Okay. Yep. See, you do three and I do yeah. Instagram, Facebook, and um, I may have to explore TikTok. I do Pinterest, but that's such a girl thing. Yeah. I mean, my wife does some Pinterest stuff. Does she do yeah. Pinterest? Yeah. And actually, interestingly enough, we, since we're talking about Instagram, mm -hmm. we just made a filter. I didn't even know you could really do that, but we just uh, we just did that. We uh, we made a filter that you could download on Instagram where you uh, your eyes are covered with cookies. You <laughs> open your mouth and cookies just come exploding. That's oh. awesome. Yeah, and so you could go to our profile, download the download the uh, the filter. I'm and so then, doing that. Yeah, and then we have another one where you on top of your head is uh, like what dessert are you, and it cycles through the desserts, mm -hmm. and uh, and then it stops on one, and you can figure out which one you yeah. are. Instagram is still, I think, popular. Yeah. It's fun. Because it's pictures. You don't get a lot of, they're, they're getting a little addy, but you realize what's an ad and you just go right over it, exactly. which we don't want to do sometimes. But um, yeah, I think Instagram is still going to be the forefront because you go on Facebook sometimes and they've got that whole algorithm and one person gets to see your blog post. You're like, yeah, seriously. Yeah. Seriously. It seems like Instagram is king at the moment, huh? I think so. Yeah. I think so too. And it's, it's user friendly. Yeah. And it's just fun to look at pictures. So, well, tell me one more time before I let you go, what deserted.co is. Yeah, so we are a dessert box company. So we fill boxes full of awesome desserts that uh, you'll never find anywhere else. And we hand doodle our cards and we send it off for you so that whoever you you want to send a gift to will blow their mind. Right. And you have a valent Valentine's is coming up. So you're encouraging people to order a Order often, order now, what's the same? Yeah, <laughs> order yeah. Order more. <laughs> yeah, we got our Valentine's Day box. It's called Eat Your Heart Out. Mm -hmm. um, and that's for sale now. It's actually on, uh, uh, it's discounted right now for kind of an early bird type thing, but uh, those are going to be going out the week of Valentine's Day. And your website? Deserted.co. And how do people find you on social media now that we just had the whole conversation? Yeah, we're actually deserted.co on all the platforms. So just deserted.co um, on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. Thank you to Jimmy LaPrell with Deserted.co. To find out more about the company or to order a box for any occasion, go to Deserted.co. That's D-E-S-S-E-R-T-E-D dot co. And look for him on Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, and TikTok. And don't forget to look for their new filter. I promise it's loads of fun. Mouthful is sponsored by CCF Documentation. Whether you want to train your employees or teach your customers how to properly use your equipment or product, or you are wanting to market your expertise to the world, 
Online training is fast becoming one of the most sought after forms of training in the business world today. Providing flexibility as well as consistency, e-learning will get your new hires or customers trained faster and with less resources. At CCF Documentation, we provide customized e-learning solutions geared to proactively and efficiently train your employees or customers with measurable training outcomes. To maximize your training effectiveness, contact CCF Documentation at ccfdocumentation.com. If you have any questions or you would like to be a guest, please contact me at mouthfulthepodcast at gmail.com. Also look for Mouthful on all the social media platforms. With Mouthful, I'm Lori Lynn Barker. Stay fresh, cheese bags. <laughs>